Welcome back to Your Average Witch, where we talk about witch life, witch stories, and sometimes a little witchcraft, on the full and new moon every month. In this episode, we meet Ashley, the farm wife witch. Ashley talks about how social media aesthetics affect her practice, how she found community, and educated us on how goat shows work. Before we get started, though, I want to talk to you about the sponsor of the show today. This episode is brought to you by Podcash as a collaboration between Racket and Stir. Podcash is free cash for your podcast. Podcash gave away $100,000 to up-and-coming podcasters like me as a way to support insanely creative and inspiring podcasters. It can be hard to get a podcast off the ground. There are things that you don't realize you need, like hosting. There has to be a way to store your podcast on the internet so people can download it. That costs money. While you can do it with your phone, you get a lot better sound quality if you actually have a microphone, which costs money. A website costs money. This is why I was so excited to have won a little grant prize from Podcash. I won $250 and I bought some new equipment, some new microphones, and now I am able to travel and record anywhere. And since I'm just starting out, this is a huge boon and I am so thankful to have won something like this. I was so excited to be able to pick things off my wish list. So if podcasting is something you're interested in or you're already a podcaster, and I know some of you are, go to podcast.com to stay up to date with future podcast happenings. And it is spelled P-O-D-C-A-S-H dot com. Definitely go check it out. I mean, I won. You can too. At least try. Now let's get to the stories. Hi, Ashley. Welcome to the show. Hey. Would you please introduce yourself and let everybody know who you are and where they can find you yeah my name is ashley you can find me at instagram farm wife witch i am a farm wife i am a project supervisor for indiana department of transportation so i work on the big projects and i raise show cattle and i'm a witch <laughs> and none of that goes together when you think about it <laughs> What does it mean to you when you call yourself a witch? It means a lot of things to me because I, I've always felt different. I've always kind of never fed in. I think uh, most of us can uh, relate to that. I was the girl that was always in cowboy boots but dressed all in black. <laughs> Made no sense. <laughs> it just makes me feel, it feels like me at the end of the day. Do you have any daily practices that you'll share with us? About the only practice I have is every morning I have to make sure I put in my ear cuff. I don't feel right. It uh, spells out fire witch in runes. And it just makes me feel like nobody can touch me. <laughs> so like a protection thing? Yeah, pretty much. Do you have any family history with witches? Okay, now this is where it gets interesting. Not really, but when I stop and I think back, I think my dad was a witch. Because he comes from the Ozarks, and a lot of things I grew up with, like we did things, you know, like... <laughs> my dad would freak out if a, a black cat walked in his path, and he immediately would turn around and walk the other way. And a lot of people may think that's superstitious, but we had, like, for New Year's, we had to go through the whole thing of you have to put money under a rock. You have to eat the black eyed peas. You have to do this, that, and the other. And it's like, I wonder if he ever realized how much he was a witch. <laughs> Where we grew up, you X'd it out, the cat. Really? You, made a, you took your pointer finger and you made an X over it in the air. I huh. did not know that. Learn something new every day. I've never heard it. Well, I guess I have heard of walking the other way, but that's not what we did. Oh, my! you, you, had, you had to not keep going that. You had to change your direction that you were going in is the way I was taught. Now I live with a black cat, so <laughs> I guess I'm fucked. Well, well, my landlady has a million black cats, and I, I never think twice about it anymore. <laughs> what would you say is your 
favorite witchcraft experience? Or okay. the worst? <laughs> I think it's like a combination. The, the one time. Okay, so I had a spell going for I wanted a job promotion. It was before I got my project supervisor promotion. And I, I, I was intent. I was going at it. I had my candles lit. And I was all sorts of excited. And it was the end of the night. And the candles going strong. And my husband snuffed it out. And he's the one that got a job offer. <laughs> Rude. I know. It's not fair. He still thinks it's hilarious. But now he knows better than to touch the candle. He always asks before he snuffs them out. But yeah, seriously. I was like, are you kidding me? How does this work? <laughs> are you out at work? If people ask, I'm I'm more than willing to tell them. I'm pretty sure you've seen like my setup. I have like a little little altar on one corner of my desk. I mean, I just don't. Hey, everybody, I'm a witch, by the way. I, I don't think any of them would be surprised. They know I'm very different. Do you ever feel like you have imposter syndrome? Yes. What do you do? So I have a mental disability and it's something I don't talk about. And because growing up with that, you you're singled out because when you take tests, you know, they always go. The teacher's not very quiet about asking you, do you want to go down to the special needs room and have your test read to you? And so it's learning to accept things and overcoming them. And it's really hard because I, I like to stay in my box. And I, so everything I do is wrong in my box, even though nobody else is allowed in my box. <laughs> so I try to push myself out of the box and remind myself that it's okay. We all, we all make mistakes. And I don't have to punish myself because I am that person who will punish myself harder than anybody could ever punish me. And I think that's growing up with uh, childhood traumas too. But it's just learning to push past it and accept myself. <laughs> but it's just really hard. <laughs> I think we all can relate to how hard it is to get past it. Yeah, so. you, yeah and we still do it. Even though it. we're like... I hate its guts. I freaking hate I, it. Oh, oh yeah. Like... I know better than to do this, but I still do it. And and my husband always looks at me and is like, I, I just don't understand why you have this problem. And I'm like, well, I just don't understand how you don't understand. <laughs> I know. What kind of person? Is he an alien? Sometimes I wonder. I I, I just, because, you know, he's, he's so accepting and it scares me sometimes. <laughs> like, What's wrong with you that I'm missing? What would you say your biggest struggle is when it comes to your practice? Trying new things. Because I'm a fire witch, I tend to stick to the candles. And I mean, I feel the strongest, but I always, you know, want to try new things. But I'm just like, but I know this works. <laughs> and it's 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 the whole mix like mindset of pushing myself out of my box that I try to do that within my practice and go, no, no, just because that works, you know, you got, you got to try something else too. You know, I regard this as a personal challenge now. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what did I start? <laughs> we'll wait till the, the next box. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> now I'm scared. <laughs> What brings you the most joy in your practice? Working with my deities. When I got started in my practice, I think pretty much we all relate to, you know, we had a had a religious trauma as well that brought us down to our path. But I never felt like I belonged in the church because I was raised Catholic. And anytime I was in the church, it just felt wrong. And... Um, I'd, I'd studied lots of different religions and it was after my husband's um, aunt passed away a few years back I uh, started looking into Norse pagan 
And that was kind of the moment when Loki was like, oh, it's about damn time. You know, I've been waiting forever for you to finally get this. Because I've always felt like there was this presence in my life. And it wasn't, you know, God and Jesus. There was this other presence and I couldn't figure it out. And it was walking down that path. And it was like, he was just like, are, are you, damn, that took you long enough. Does your partner practice? No. He does enjoy all the holidays, obviously, like everybody does. But he understands it. He's still he's still very tied to being Catholic, too. But he loves the whole being more in touch with Mother Nature and the Earth, you know, because we farm. And he's like, this just makes sense. It just makes sense. And that's all that's what he says all the time. And his his favorite story is Ostara with the turning the the bird into a bunny. He loves that story. It's his favorite story ever. What has been the most surprising thing about being a witch? Being accepted when I'm I I'm not witchy aesthetic and most of the time when I walk out places, people, you know, their first thought isn't that I'm a witch. <laughs> you know, you see me and I'm in jeans and work boots and look like I just walked off a job site. That people don't automatically think that I'm a witch and that they're very accepting. Although the younger witches, when they first start and they first see me, they look at me like, uh, you don't belong here. Oh, trust me, honey, I belong here more than you think. <laughs> If you saw my home, you would understand. <laughs> How would you say witchcraft has changed your life? Oh boy, it, it's changed my life very in a big way. Because it felt like when I first called myself a witch, which I, you know found found my practice and I was starting to walk into the closet because I didn't under know how my husband was gonna react and he was the first one to call me a witch <laughs> and I was like okay well how do you feel about this and he's like I don't know are you still you as far as I know and he's like well then I don't see what's wrong with it <laughs> okay but as much as I still me it's the me that's always been inside and it felt like the last of my mask had fallen off and I can finally step outside and be me, not caring what people think or judge me, but actually be me. Do you feel like your environment has shaped your practice? Like, do you think it would be different if you lived somewhere else? I think it would because being... Being a farmer, we're always outside. We're always in the midst of things. And I mean, you've seen You mean my a animals. literal farm. People don't know this, but it, you mean a little, literal farm. Please explain that. Yes. Um, I farm. So we have 300 acres of grain farm and we have 250 head of cattle. We are considered actually a micro farm. We're, we're just shy of a mini farm. But most people would call us micro because we only have 300 acres and 250 head. To most people who don't experience farming are like, that's a lot. It's like, oh, no. Um, where I grew up, because I didn't grow up in Ohio. I live in Ohio. And I came from Indiana. And where I come from, the smallest farmers are 1,200 acres. So most farmers have about 3,000 plus acres. So, but we still farm. We have big tractors. Uh, if I step outside, I go right into my barn. There's a combine out there, a tractor with a feed grinder, and we, we've got the whole shebang. So farming, I, I'm a farm wife, but I am the farm wife that still drives the tractor out in the field. <laughs> and a lot of times I'm Marcoing everybody on Marco in a tractor. <laughs> so how do you feel like it shaped your practice, shapes your practice? How would it be different if you didn't live in, on a farm? I'm very, I live, in, we live in a world where most people don't understand all of farming. So they always think you're out to kill everybody. And it's like, no, no, um, what's in that field I'll eat. 
I there there's nothing wrong with it. Um, and there's a lot of misconceptions, and it's very frustrating because most people don't understand a lot of the um, like research you find was actually funded by agriculture. So all our money goes back into the research we do to better ourselves. And we're a farm that's really all about, um, how do I want to say it? Um, we repurpose, you know, we have cattle and our cattle produce our fertilizer. <laughs> so we're very, we're very much in taking care of the earth. We don't like to overwork our dirt, but there comes a time where you can't underwork it either, or it just gets really, um, hard for even the worms to get through it so when it rains it'll actually bring them out of the soil because we have very clay soil so i'm very more in tuned with mother nature because i really care about the dirt we have you know it's it costs a lot of money to have that dirt so you really want to take care of it <laughs> but you just feel more closer to earth than anything in the world and I think if I spent my time all the time in the city I wouldn't quite feel that way not saying people that live in the city don't feel close to mother nature just I don't think I would feel as close as I do now how do you feel about the wish community oh boy I have mixed feelings there's there's great people out there that really want to accept you and there's other people who look at me and want to tear me down because I don't meet their ideas of what a witch should be you know you go on instagram and you see the beautiful aesthetic and it's beautiful trust me i follow many people on instagram that have beautiful witch aesthetic because it's beautiful to look at but that's not what my house looks like i promise you like it it looks a little witchy when when you look at certain places and you know i'm i'm looking up at um i have a 1984 deer mount that uh was dyed black um, somebody got rid of it, you know, their a family member passed away and it got repurposed and he's black with gold tipped antlers. And I mean, most people would be like, that's wrong. And it's like, well, that's my aesthetic. I, I was raised to live off the land because my dad, like I said, come from the Ozarks and he grew up poor. Um, he didn't have indoor plumbing until he was in high school. So, I mean, I just, when people look at me, they just, they don't want to accept me because they have these ideas of the way I am just based on the way I look. And it's like, no, <laughs> no, thank you. But my other thing is, is I can't stand that we use the term baby witch. I don't know about you, but that drives me nuts. Like, you're not a baby. You're a young witch. That's the way I always describe it. You're new to the, everything, but you're not... You're not a baby. And I feel like anybody that uses that term is just insulting someone. Or am I just weird for thinking that? Lots of people say that when they come on here, if it comes up. Uh -huh. What do you like about it? The people that are accepting, are they become your family. So I really, I really, it's, it's a double-edged sword. Because you have the one side where people are just, you know, because the way I don't, I look, I don't fit in. And then you have the other ones that are like, you know, we're family now. Welcome to the family. It's kind of something that I didn't think I would ever have in my life. Because I've always been the person that walk against the grain. So many people were like, well, you're either too much this or you're too much that. So I really don't want to be your friend. And it's like, oh, okay, well, I'm just me. But all right, thanks. What's something you wish was discussed more? In the witch community. That. If, if there is anything. Oh, oh I do. That. There, there's a difference. Between closed practice. And. Um, what is it? Gatekeeping. Is that the word I'm looking for? Probably. Yeah. So. Most people actually, um, you know, they, they tell you, oh, you can't be Norse pagan because you're this, that, and the other. And it's like, excuse me, what? Or if I use a certain 
something to smoke cleanse. Well, no, I don't do the other thing. That there's a difference between gatekeeping and closed practice. And I don't think people understand the difference. I guess that's just me, too, sometimes. But I, it just annoys me when everybody's like, oh, no, you can't be, you can't do that or you can't be like that. And it's like, well, this thing is not a closed practice, whatever that thing may be, you know. And it's just annoying. It's very annoying. How do you feel social media affects your practice? Since we're talking about... <laughs> yeah well who we talk to which is the internet (laughs) yeah 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 um it has its good points there there are some some things that are good because there are the good people out there that are trying to teach people the right way and but there's so many people out there that you know are trying to teach people you know wrong ways of doing things and it's like no 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 <laughs> let's all stand why don't you uh back up and do your research before you start spouting off this that and the other and it's very frustrating because uh i am that person that went down the tiktok rabbit hole and witch talk can be so toxic oh it could be so toxic and I see so many young witches that want to turn to it and it's like, oh no, 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 please, please take the what they're saying with a grain of salt. Even though there's some great creators out there, take what they're saying with a grain of salt. Do you feel like you use social media to affect other witches? I I like to think that my Instagram um, maybe shows a different side that just because I'm not witchy aesthetic that you don't have to live that way. You don't have to, you know, there's, there's no dress code. There's no way your house have to look, has to look, um, or you have to do certain things. Like I don't, I don't cast a circle when I do magic. When I, when I practice, I, I don't, it's just not what works in my practice. And people think that, Oh, but I was told you have to, you have to cast a circle. Well, my house is my protection. (laughs) Trust me, there's, there's tourmaline and tiger's eye in every window and there's witch's bell on each door because I'm, I'm very paranoid about having protection everywhere in my house of all, every wall is protected. Uh, So I don't feel the need for a circle that I feel that I want to show people that it's okay. You, you don't have to do everything to a T. There's no, there's no right or wrong way to practice. What is your advice to somebody just starting out? Just that there's no wrong or way. And take what you find on social media with a grain of salt. That, that would definitely be what I would say. And, and read. Uh, read every book you can get your hands on. Even though some of it might be wrong, I mean, you'll learn that along the way. Because we never stop learning. We never stop learning. What would you like to hear from somebody, from someone more experienced than you? Right now. Oh boy. I I honestly have no idea. I think this is one question I don't think I can answer. Because I, I don't know until somebody says it. Do you have a favorite holiday? It, it's a toss-up between Samhain and Yule. And it's probably going to lean towards closer to Yule because I'm a fire witch. And feeling the sun is coming back is like the greatest feeling because I'm not a moon witch. I'm more of, I, I need the sun in my life. I, I miss the sun when it's gone. It makes me very sad. (laughs) What or who would you say are your three biggest influences on your practice? This this is going to be one you hate, but you for sure. Lord Jesus. You should have known that was coming. (laughs) You should have known. I did not. (laughs) You were one of the first witches I found on YouTube. That's right. Real weird. I know, I know, but you were, and 
I and most people what were you, you know, searching for. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know, it's been a while. Okay, I just don't remember. <laughs> but you know, it's it's feeling that I'm. I know a lot of people are like, well, I know I met I found out about Kim because of Waba, and I'm the opposite. <laughs> Which I think is probably one of the funniest things. Um, but you you definitely were. Because I felt more comfortable that I didn't need this witch aesthetic that I see on other, you know, YouTubers. Which I love them. But You know I don't have that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> but but if people see pictures of me, they're going to be like, oh, oh, now I get it. Like, just, <laughs> just go, go see my Instagram. You'll totally get it. Like. I I am not. I I I went out yesterday for my birthday with my family and I was wearing um basically barrel racing jeans so they're like a printed denim and it basically looked like lace and it had um like uh southern southwest like style striped colors um it they, they're pretty funky. Post them on Marco. I oh I will. I'll do that. I have I can't another vision that. <laughs> I uh, probably would help but uh yeah I also have another pair that are a little too long but at least I've got a friend that's gonna hem them for me but um back to the question um the other two would definitely be Macy and Charlie from Woba I mean I've learned so much thanks to Woba <laughs> I think we all can relate to that that's your that's how you're counting? You're counting them as each individual people? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because they each... Because, okay, they each talk about their own thing, and they each have their own practices, and they do them both differently. Okay. That's just... <laughs> nobody's ever done that before. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I know. Everybody always lumps them together, because, you know, they're wabba. Because it's but... one hour. <laughs> I know. Okay, okay. <laughs> Who would you like to see on the show? I would say Hearth from Hearth Wish on YouTube. She is awesome. She talks in depth on a lot of things. And I would really love to know, like, where she got started and everything. And I know she's, like, she she has lives that just, like, go for hours just answering questions. She's so knowledgeable. She's so awesome. And I'd love for you to interview her. I think that would be so awesome. Is there anything else you wanted to bring up or ask? And now uh, for the two th questions that were not on the, the question list, would you please recommend something to the listeners? Yes, absolutely. Adventures with Purpose on YouTube. They're amazing. They're a dive team. They do search and rescue recovery of people that have gone missing in vehicles. So they, they're a lot of times suicide, a lot of time. And the other times they're like dementia people who got lost and confused and they couldn't get out of their vehicles and they go and they find them and bring them home to their families. And they're amazing. So they they're dead bodies. They don't show them. Okay. So trigger warning, there's death. Yes. I wouldn't be able to watch that. I know it's really hard, but they're really awesome because they don't ask for any money and they don't ask money from the families. Basically, they do everything on AdSense or if anybody wants to donate anything or buy from their merch. That's cool. But they, they always just ask that you subscribe and you don't skip the commercials yeah, that come up. That helps everybody. So, don't skip commercials, folks. Yeah. yeah, so that way then they have the money. And I think that's like one of the awesome, most awesome things that you don't have to pay anything. Just actually don't skip through the commercials. It's pretty awesome. But they're, they're awesome. They've brought um, at least 20 people, if not a couple more since the last time I've had the count. Yeah. Last question. That is not actually a question. Please tell me your favorite story to tell. Oh. This is fun. <laughs> so, I did 4-H when I was younger because I was that farm kid. My first year in 4-H, I always wanted to show cattle. 
And because I was really tiny, my parents were terrified of a 1,500 pound steer possibly dragging me down the arena. I kind of understand, but then they were okay the following year, me being on a 1,200 pound free spirited horse. So it never made sense to me. So my parents convinced me to show goats. And it's not as cool in my, for me. I love my goats, don't get me wrong. But it's still not as cool as show cattle. And that's why I show cattle today and raise show cattle. <laughs> Be- because my parents wouldn't let me when I was younger. So my first year, we went and we bought this goat. And he was a pygmy. So when we got him, he was small enough to fit in a beer bottle box. He was that tiny. And Joey grew up and got bigger because his favorite thing to eat was my brother's show cattle. Um, he, he preferred their feed over his own. So he got pretty big. And we had to, part, part of um, showing goats, they have to be dehorned. And it's for safety reasons, which I kind of get it. But Joey had a sinus pocket in his one horn and we almost lost him. So we did everything we could and we saved him and we got really attached to him. So Joey got even more spoiled. So he got even bigger. He basically looked like he had swallowed two basketballs. He was that big. So we showed up at fair and my mom, you know, we get, we get through way in and we get to the, get to Joey's pen. And my mom looks at me and goes, Ashley, I want to talk to you for a second. And I said, all right. She's like, I don't want you to get your hopes up, but honey, Joey's just really big and he's not going to win. And I'm like, yeah, but she's like, I, I just don't want you to get your hopes up. I, I was nine and she didn't, she didn't want me to have these high expectations that I was going to win because I showed rabbits my whole life. <laughs> so I was used to walking away with awards, but my mom always wanted me to remember that you don't always win. And she goes, Joey's just not going to win. And I was like, all right. She's like, but it's okay because Joey's going to come home. You know, we, we, Joey's not, you know, going to go to auction. He's coming home with us and he'll always be home. So it's okay. It's like, all right. He was intact, right? No, no, he was a weather. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, weathers go to auction for obviously I yeah. trigger warning for people. Sorry. But um, but because he had had so many antibiotics, because you can't um, send a animal to market with antibiotics, it's actually illegal, and you could get heavily fined. <laughs> so he couldn't go anyways. But we all became very attached to him. So he was coming home no matter what. He he stayed. He lived with us till oh boy, how old was jo- Joey? Had to be about fourteen years old when we lost him. He lived a very long life. He was. We, we lived on in a cul-de-sac at on the edge of town, but we had five acres so we could have livestock at home. So the neighbors all knew Joey. Joey would go visit the neighbors and they would just open the door and go, Joey, go home. And Joey would run back home. He Everybody loved him in the neighborhood. But anyways, the day of the show came and, you know, my expectations had already been, you know, dismissed. <laughs> They're gone. I'm just here to show. Um, I had other animals to show. I had my rabbits, so it was okay. And I'd already won. um, I know a poster I'd already won on. So I, I, I was okay, you know. And I get out there and I'm confused. When you're first time showing livestock in that matter, you're, you're so confused to how everything works. And next thing I know, the judge is putting you in order and I was at the front and I was confused. So the judge starts talking and my mom is just like looking at me and I was still lost and confused. Look at back. I, I mean, it was such a blur. I walk out and my 4-H leader is like, Ashley, congratulations. You won your class. And I was like, I what? You know, I don't understand, but Joey wasn't going to win. And my mom's like, okay, well, it's, it's just your class. So, you know, that's good. Good job. So I had to go back for champion. And it's, you know, Joey, Joey's huge. And there's this little bit pygmy out there with him. And Joey won grand champion pygmy weather that year. What? Yep. 
my mother told me I was not going to win, and Joey won grand champion. <laughs> and my poor mother, I tell this story anytime everybody asks me, like, what, what's a good story or, you know, your favorite 4-H member? This is the moment. Every time. And my mom's like, you're never letting me live this down. Oh, no. No. When I did 10th year and I did royalty contest, the question I drew, well, what was your most memorable 4-H moment? It was that. I told that story on stage in front of judges and everybody. <laughs> and How my mother. He, win? he He act In our opinion, he was huge. Looking back through my pictures, I'll have to dig out the pictures for you and I'll show you on Marco. Joey actually was very nice looking. He was confirmationally correct. He he was perfect. He just to us looked way overweight. Why wouldn't why did you weather him? Because um you can't take intact animals to the 4-H fair. Oh 4-H. There's, I'm thinking yeah. state fair. <laughs> no. Yeah, you can't you can't take intact animals to county fair. Cuz it's the opposite for state here. And see, the thing is, is every state is different, too. Actually, because let I... me rephrase that. The, the Dairy Goat Associate, the ADGA, they have to be intact. So, um, for open shows, because at state fair, they most state fairs have open and 4-H showing. You know how many shows I've done? <laughs> None! <laughs> <laughs> and see, that's the thing, like, like freaking, uh... Who is it? Weedem and Reap. I'm going off her information. <laughs> That's what I know. Yeah, um, but no, um, most state fairs are they have an open show as well as a 4-H show. And each state is actually very different in how they do things. And I've I always knew that, but I never knew like the extent of it till I showed obviously in Indiana. And now the kid that shows my cattle, um, he does obviously here in Ohio. So I, I've learned and I always am like, you know, you could do this so much better. My husband's always like, yeah, uh, well, this is just how we do it. And you're going to have to accept it. And I'm like, I just can't. <laughs> Probably why I'll never be on the board of directors. <laughs> well, thank you for being on the show and for talking with me. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I will see you on Marco. All Bye. right. Bye. Usually this is when I would be putting in a review, but instead I am going to be reading some of the love letters that people wrote to help me win the award from Podcash. Well, thank you for being on the show and for talking with me. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I will see you on Marco. All Bye. right. Bye. Usually this is when I would be putting in a review, but instead I am going to be reading some of the love letters that people wrote to help me win the award from Podcash. The first one says, I love your average witch so much. Each turn of the moon, I look forward to hearing from new and diverse members of the witch community that I've known exist, but never before heard represented in such a way. Her guests get to bring their entire selves to the conversation. None of these have names, but I appreciate you all so much because you are helping me grow and I hope to see and talk to you at Anahata's where we will do a mini interview if you come up to me and say, hey, let me tell you what I think. Hey, thanks for listening to this episode of Your Average Witch. You can find us all around the internet on Instagram at Your Average Witch Podcast, Twitter at Average Witch Pod. Facebook at facebook.com slash your average witch podcast at your average witch.com and at your favorite podcast service. Want to help the podcast grow? Leave a review. You can review us on Amazon and Apple podcasts, and now you can rate us on Spotify. You just might hear your review read at the end of the next episode. To rate your average witch on Spotify, click the home key, click on your average witch podcast, and then leave a rating. You can also support the show by going to patreon.com slash cleverkimscurios. If you'd like to recommend someone for the podcast, like to be on it yourself, or if you'd like to advertise on the podcast, send an email to youraveragewitchpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the moon changes. 